Hi everyone! I wanted to do a quick showcase video on some of the stuff that I've been working on in this game so far. So in the past two videos that I've posted to this channel, I've talked a little bit about my main bus design, and I'm more or less done with it at this point. As a reminder, the reason why I built this main bus topology is mostly because I come from Factorio, and that's what I know. And as I've played the game and learned it more, as you can see, I've started using planetary logistics and interplanetary logistics, and I'm, I'm understanding the nuances of all of these things. Uh, but for the time being, I've kind of completed my project here on this planet. This is my Megabus, as I'm calling it. Uh, and it has got a majority of the intermediate products that you need for crafting in this game. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly go through it, just at a top-level view, and go over some of the things that I've put on the bus, some of the things that I haven't. And then lastly, I've got a bonus at the end, because I want to show you uh, my Dyson Swarm that I've constructed so far, because I found a, a geometry that I think looks super cool and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, so let's just jump into map view so you can kind of see the big picture here. So I've got a couple of sporadic mining outposts on this planet. You can see that I'm almost out of iron, so I'm probably going to need to re either relocate soon or have uh, more iron brought to the, uh, to the planet here. You can see that I've got a little bit of uh, smelting here for, for graphite because I was very low on it coming from this coal pocket right here. But, in general, smelting is done right here. You can see that we, we feed a couple of different lines here. Oh, thank you, autosave. Very cool. But what we've got on the bus is two lanes of iron, two lanes of copper, a lane of magnets, and a lane of glass. And all that smelting is done here. Obviously, this can support almost a full blue belt. Uh, but right now, I don't have the ore inputs to, to basically fulfill that all the way. Uh, but then moving on from there, I'll, let me see if I can convince Mapview to yeah, go back vertical there. Here we go. So starting from the top here, once again we've got a, a tidally locked planet, so I've got three ray receivers that are operating with 100% efficiency at all times. A nice solar field here for before I had those up. Uh, and then some accumulators as well to help me when I place down new interplanetary logistics hubs. But essentially, we start out pretty normally. We've got uh, all of the basic ingredients here on the bus, the gears, the circuits, the magnets, all that kind of stuff. Then we move into engine production. And then after that, we do kind of a little mini mall here. So I've got my the first two belts that I need to have made. And then we go all the way up to sort of threes right here. We have splitters as well. Uh, and you can see that those things are not really being added to the bus. The next things that are added to the bus are the prisms and the plasma exciters. Uh, for the purposes of making the wireless power poles. Uh, but then we've got a little bit of a mall for solar here, and then we get into the real meat of the production for the base. We've got a whole ton of electronics and a whole ton of processors, because that was my bottleneck for quite some time. We've also got our, uh, what are they called, super magnetic rings, which are also a very important component for a lot of different things. But then you can see here that my photonic component production is active right now because I've got uh, eight railguns going right now, firing solar sails, and uh, have to have a, a fair supply of those to keep up. But then moving back over, you can see we've got uh, accumulators being made here. I also did not shy away from doing smelting on the bus as I needed. Uh, so when I realized that I didn't have sufficient resources for uh, particular things, you can see here the silicon and the, and the, uh, the coal I grab here to make the uh, purified silicon, the stone. I've got some stone coming from back there as well. And then we've got a lot of coal here to make me graphite as well as diamonds. So we just kind of stick those under the bus to the side here and, and incorporate it into the rest of everything. So then we've got our solar cell production, like I said, accumulators here. And then we've got a whole bank of chemical plants here uh, making some of the things that I needed. So I was able to bring in water and refined oil from off-world because there are no oil veins on this planet whatsoever, as you can see. So we're making some sulfuric acid, making some plastic and some uh, carbon nanotubes. The graphite, or not graphite, graphene production was originally something that I had also done off-planet but then uh, I realized just how much you need it in this game. So I created kind of a uh, second setup here to feed that as well straight onto the bus. And then I realized that even that wasn't enough and it's not active right now. But I've got an, uh, an interstellar logistics station set up bringing fire ice from another star system and just a little bit of extra production to bolster that because you need a lot of graphene. Uh, so yep, carbon nanotubes, and then we move into kind of the end, the the end tier stuff, the later stuff, 
We've got the uh, the particle containers. Amusingly enough, I don't really need steel all that much on this bus. So I've got a source of steel here pretty much just for the aluminum alloy. I don't, yeah, I don't use it for anything else, which is kind of amusing. I don't really put the buildings on the bus because they require four inputs. And with my bus topology, that doesn't really work the best. And mostly I just craft the buildings as I need them anyways. Uh, but then we get into, you know, the structural components. I've got belt threes all the way down here because I finally had the, uh, the components that I needed. And then we basically move into the things that are required to make the special processors, as well as these little rocket guys. Uh, deuterium is also coming from off planet over here as well. And that is kind of what the bus looks like. Um, had a little mini split off here to make some purple signs temporarily. Next thing that I'm working on is going to a new star system and setting up a, a logistics planet, essentially, to make a research. But this is kind of what it looks like. It was really fun to build this. Uh, this poor game and my poor GPU are very unhappy with my decision to do this, uh, but I am happy with it myself. So this is the Megabus. And then the next thing that I wanted to show off is you, you can see that I've got my vertical launch facilities here, and they're not actually working because I have completed the first portion of my Dyson Sphere. Obviously, I don't have green cube production yet, so I don't have the increased latitude, but I have completed my ring, and I've got a wonderful swarm to boot, and I wanted to show that to you guys. So this is what it looks like, and I think it looks really cool. So you can see we got the ring right around the side here. That's the Dyson ring. And then we've got this wonderfully beautiful swarm geometry. So I wanted to show you how I did that really fast. Um, unfortunately, if you click on these, it's not going to tell you, right? It's not going to tell you what is where, but I, I remembered because I did it methodically. So let's just take a second here and look at this. So we've got the ring around the outside creating 303 megawatts for the time being, and then all 6,400 of my solar sails making uh, 233 megawatts. So obviously the, the Dyson Sphere is very powerful from a, from a power generation perspective. The Dyson ring right now is nothing special. It's basically just an equatorial ring, uh, a little bit greater than uh, 10,000. I don't know what the, what is the, there's no unit on the radius, which is kind of interesting, but, but I'm assuming it's 10,500 there or thereabouts. But with the Dyson Swarm, uh, this I actually spent some time on. You can see that I added eight extra orbits. For whatever reason, they don't let you delete the first orbit. You can delete other ones, but you can't delete the first orbit. So I have eight orbits here. And what it is, is all of the orbits are at a, a radius of 10,000, an inclination of 45 degrees. And then the ascending node uh, advances eight times around the, uh, the circle by 45 degrees. So I've got my first one at zero degrees here so here's my zero degree one let's just quickly talk about how this works by the way in case you don't actually know what these numbers mean so when you go to add an orbit obviously the radius is how far out it is right the radius of the circle um, the inclination is relative to this the, the equatorial plane relative to this circle right here you can see that if i look at head on here this is kind of flat so each one of these individual orbits here is at an angle of 45 degrees to that equatorial plane. Now the ascending node, it's it's really, um, the longitude of the ascending node is really what it is, or the LAAN, is where the crossing over point of the equatorial plane goes from below it to above it. So you can see right here, I've got two, let's just go back to zero here so it's easier to talk about it. But you can see that if I if I trace my, my zero latitude here, you can see that I've actually got uh, two different solar sail orbits intersecting right here, but only one of them is actually placed at zero. It's the one that goes from bottom to top at zero. The other one is going from top to bottom, which actually means that its ascending node, the, the, the ascension, right, meaning going from bottom to top is essentially, that's what it means, ascending. So the other one going from top to bottom here is essentially going to be going from bottom to top 180 degrees around the circle. So at 180 degrees here, you'll see that now I've got the other one that's going down here, going up, and then vice versa as well. So the way that I designed this Dyson Swarm was essentially eight separate orbits, all at 45 degrees inclination, and 45 degrees of increment between each of the ascending nodes. So I've got one at 0, 45, 90, 135, 
and then the all of those plus 180 degrees. And you get this nice pattern that looks like this. So yeah, from here, I'm going to be working on uh, obviously increasing my Dyson Sphere production. I need to get some research going. And from there, I hope to have another showcase video for you in a couple weeks to show you what goes on from there. Uh, but for now, that's all I've got for you. So thank you much.